Tonight, another couple conned by cold callers. Alison and Ewan Oliver were targeted by men mis-selling loft insulation and lost thousands of pounds. He said, no, the moisture is being trapped in the roof boards and they'll rot. You need to get this removed. That's when I thought this was never fit for purpose. Also making the headlines, trying to keep the promise. Despite making slow progress, the organisation tasked with transforming Scotland's care system says it can meet its targets. I'll have the sport live from Easter Road as Hibernian versus Celtic headlines a big night in the Scottish Premiership. And carry on camping. Music fans from around the world are setting up home at the Hydro, hoping for a front row view of the 1975. I'm Kellyanne Woodland in Edinburgh. And I'm John Mackay in Glasgow. This is the STV News at six. Good evening. A couple from Glenrothes have become the latest people to tell STV News how they were targeted by cold callers mis-selling loft insulation. Alison and Ewan Oliver were convinced to take out a finance agreement costing more than £10,000 for work experts say they didn't need. Meanwhile, companies who use spray foam for legitimate building projects say the industry is being destroyed by cowboy firms and are backing calls to tackle their mis-selling. Ollie Dickinson has been following the story. Alison and Ewan Oliver say they're an energy-conscious couple who, like many, wanted to make savings on their bills. So when they were approached about insulation for their loft, they thought it was a good idea. In July... We had a cold call um, who spoke to me and arranged to come back the following day when my wife would be in, and he spoke to both of us. He asked us if we'd ever heard of spray foam insulation, which we hadn't, but he sat there and he showed us photographs and videos and explained, you know, he said, you're obviously interested in being as if heat efficient as you possibly can. He said, this is, this is what you need. However, this is what they were left with, along with a £10,000 finance bill. I feel we were kind of manipulated into taking the finance anyway. I don't know how, how you remember that, but, you know, the guy was saying finance is, is available if you're struggling. Uh -huh. And to compound their misery, independent experts now say they didn't need the insulation. They also found it to be poor quality and incorrectly installed. It means their roof is now in danger of collapse. Up to that point, I thought, this stuff is genuine insulation. It's proper stuff. You can use it to insulate roofs. But then when the, um, the independent um, guy came and had a look at it, he said, no, the moisture is being trapped in the roof boards and they'll rot. You need to get this removed. That's when I thought this was never fit for purpose. Open cell spray foam insulation when used correctly and by an authorised installer can be safe. <coughs> Barry Masterson runs one of the biggest licensed and accredited fitters in Scotland. He says cowboy firms are killing the industry and wants to see them held to account. There's a lot of good contractors out there doing good work uh, and they're putting in hours and making sure that what they do for their customer is the right thing to do and they're, they're not so, so much focused on the sale but they're more focused on doing the right thing for the customer in their home whereas the people that are putting in un uncertified foams and by unlicensed technicians um, they're the ones that are really making it difficult uh, to run a business in this industry. The Crown Office is investigating any potential criminality in cases like Alison and Ewan's. They now face a wait to see how much it will cost them to fix any damage done. Ollie Dickinson, STV News. The organisation leading the transformation of Scotland's care system remains confident it can meet its targets despite a lack of progress in key areas. The promise was launched four years ago following an independent review. However, a charity representing people with experience of the care system is less optimistic. 
Who Cares Scotland is warning the policy will not be fulfilled by 2030 unless local authorities are given more support. Our political correspondent Ewan Petrie reports. You can smile. Evie was born three months premature. Her parents struggled to cope until they received support from the charity Circle Scotland. I actually don't like to think about where I'd be without Circle. I think it, it would be a different story to where I am now for myself, for my children, for my whole family. They've took us places physically and mentally I didn't know we could reach. We will keep the promise. There has been progress in keeping families together since the promise was launched four years ago. It committed to transforming the care system by 2030. A report last summer found it was not on track. However, at a conference marking the anniversary this week, there was optimism it could still be met. We know there are workforce challenges. People are working day in, day out for change. But we know that um, that's difficult. And we know that we need, for example, more social workers, more foster carers. Um, but there's also really opportunity and hope too, I think. So we're still really confident that the 2030 target can be kept. However, the charity Who Cares Scotland remains concerned about a lack of progress in key areas, including education. Since the publication of the promise in 2020, 1.3 million days of absence have been noted by care experienced kids. And I think that figure is just far too high. I think a lot of could be done and understanding what goes on in a care experienced kid's life outside the school. The charity also highlights the continued use of restraint and companies profiting from care. We're seven years on from the independent care review and we're still having conversations about hope and I think hope isn't enough. We need resources. We don't think the 2030 target will be met unless local authorities are given the support that they need to be given. When are you completing your PhD? Today the First Minister visited a project supporting people with experience of care to re-enter or stay in education. He believes councils have what they need to fulfil the promise. I think the funding we're providing uh, is adequate to local government, but there's no doubt at all that those conversations will have to continue. We're talking about Budget 24-25, uh, and of course we're seeking to keep the promise and work until 2030, so I've got no doubt this will be a conversation we have over many, many years. Four years on, there is progress for some, but the pace of change still needs to quicken. Ewan Petrie, STV News. Rishi Sunak is facing calls to apologise for attacking Labour's stance on trans rights on the day the mother of a murdered trans teenager went to Parliament to meet MPs. There were cries of shame in the Commons during a tense Prime Minister's questions. Our Westminster correspondent Paris Gutsianis was there. So Paris, what happened? Brianna Jai was a 16-year-old transgender girl stabbed to death a year ago this week. Handing down life sentences to her teenage killers, a judge said one of them was motivated by hostility towards her trans identity. Today, Brianna's mother, Esther, was at Prime Minister's questions calling for tougher laws against online hate. But the Prime Minister sparked a row when he attacked Labour's stance on gender policies. It's a bit rich, Mr Speaker, to hear about promises from someone who's broken every single promise he was elected on. I think I counted almost 30 in the last year. Pensions, planning, peerages, public sector pay, tuition fees, childcare, second referendums, defining a woman. Although, although in fairness, that was only 99% of a U-turn. Of all the weeks to say that, when Brianna's mother is in this chamber, shame parading as a man of integrity when he's got absolutely no responsibility. Absolute. Of all. The Prime Minister did pay tribute to Brianna's mother at the end of PMQs, but Number 10 is resisting calls to apologise. There are also calls for Mr Sunak to apologise for a £1,000 bet in a TV interview about deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda. The Prime Minister on Monday this week accepted a crude bet regarding the lives of asylum seekers. In doing so, he demeaned them as individuals and he degraded the office that he currently holds. So can I ask him, will he apologise? We may have a principal disagreement on this. I believe and we believe that if someone comes to this country illegally, they shouldn't be able to stay, they should be removed, and that's why we're committed to our Rwanda scheme. 
Both Keir Starmer and the SNP's Stephen Flynn met with Brianna's mother after PMQs. The incidents have prompted questions about Mr. Sunak's political judgment. And ahead of a general election later this year, it's a sign of just how bad-tempered the rhetoric could become. Paulus at Westminster, thank you. Other stories in the West, and a man has appeared in court after being arrested and charged under the Explosive Substances and Misuse of Drugs Acts. It comes after the discovery of potentially dangerous substances at a Glasgow flat. Officers were called to Old Shettleton Road on Monday following reports of concern for a person. Two properties were evacuated last night following the discovery. Martin Cox made no plea at Glasgow Sheriff Court. A road in Glasgow has been closed after the suspected burst water pipe caused part of the carriageway to sink. Dornall Avenue in Yoker has been shut off while work takes place to fill the void. Scottish Waters says it's investigating the issue. A white Kia ended up off-road and in one of the flood drainage basins of Glasgow's Site Hill area. The car rolled in just before 7 o'clock last night on Pinkston Road and the area was taped off this morning. Police say the owner is preparing for recovery. No one was injured. Glasgow's Virgin Hotel went into liquidation suddenly in December, just four months after its grand opening. Now musicians claim they're still owed thousands of pounds by the site's managing firm. And while all Virgin Hotels are owned independently, they say it's on Richard Branson's brand to take responsibility. Vidushi Tavari has more. Katrina DJed at Glasgow's Virgin Hotel every weekend. She was promised stable pay as long as her disco beats kept customers happy. But week after week, she found the number of unpaid invoices kept building to the tune of £3,000. I was repeatedly told that the reason that I wasn't being paid it was because to do with um, admin errors. But there was just something much bigger going on that I didn't know about and the other musicians didn't know about either. I just don't feel there's much respect for any of us. If anything, I kind of feel like I've been taken advantage of. And she's not alone. Multiple other musicians claim they've been cheated. One talent booker and musician says about £15,000 is owed to performers. The last thing we imagined was for a company like Virgin that has its roots in the music industry to effectively exploit local artists and exploit the Scottish music scene. Now, since all Virgin Hotels are owned independently, the brand itself isn't responsible for any unpaid invoices. But the musicians say they feel like they've been exploited by Virgin after placing their trust in the company's reputation and continuing to perform on the promise of payment. They knew what was going on under their noses at Virgin Hotel Glasgow and I think it's really on them to sort it out and I think they should be held accountable for it. The hotel fell into liquidation in December and administrators estimate there will not be sufficient funds to provide any return to creditors. Virgin Hotels declined to comment on the story but reiterated it had tried to find solutions to keep the hotel open. Richard Branson's Virgin Empire began with music and record shops. People like Katrina say he should remember where it all started and pay up. Vidushi Tiwari, STV News. OK, time for your sport now, and Jamie is live from Easter Road. Yes, good evening from the capital, where two teams who are desperate to get back to winning ways will face each other tonight. Celtic will get to in just a moment, but after collapsing at home to St Mirren at the weekend, this is a big night for Nick Montgomery and his Hibs side. Hibs are without a win since the start of December. The supporters made their feelings known at the end of that match. The players know that they have to rediscover some form to get back into the top six. It's got to be. It's, it's the aim for a, a club like ourselves. Um, you know, it's inexcusable if we don't you know, achieve that and if we don't then it's a, it's a failure but like you say we, we need to get a bit of consistency, we need to hit a bit of form um, and, ho and hopefully we can. What you have to do with a team like Celtic, you have to nullify their threats and they've got a lot of them um, but yeah what's important is that you know we can create chances and, and, and we've got speed, yeah we give them full respect um, and, and yeah right now it's a, a good opportunity for us to bounce back and really put a performance in. 
Well, after Rangers drew level at the top of the table with Celtic last night, this is a chance for the champions to get their noses back out in front. Interestingly, manager Brendan Rodgers hasn't won here at Easter Road. After drawing with Aberdeen at the weekend, Celtic know that they can ill afford any more slip-ups. It's a tight race at the moment, and, and look, we we know what it's going to take to, to win to win the league, and, and that's that's our objective. So, look, we we just want to win as many games as possible, and and we feel like that will get us there. And look, we know we know the pressure's there to, to win these games, and and that. We can't drop many more points. Listen, we've been in good positions there. I think at the last game we were there, we, we, we should win the game, but we started the first 60 minutes way too slow. We have to bring our game to the uh, the football match, and if we can do that, then we can uh, hopefully have a good evening. Elsewhere tonight, Hearts are looking to keep their fine record away from home going when they travel to St Johnston. Hearts have won eight games away this season, and boss Stephen Naismith says that it's all down to preparation. It's going away from that feeling of the records that have been at these grounds and and how we go and prepare for them. We prepare for every game the same. The mindset is the same, whether it's home or away. And what, like I said earlier, the real understanding of how the game's going to play out. And also in the Premiership tonight, Kilmarnock take on Livingston and it's St Mirren against Dundee. Now to last night's action and James Tavernier says that Rangers will only continue to grow after they defeated Aberdeen. With more on that and news of a thumping victory for Motherwell, here's Ronnie Charters. A hard-fought win over Aberdeen saw the gap wiped out. At full time, Ibrox was rocking as the Rangers captain issued a warning, the squad will only get stronger. See that the performances that we're putting in um, week in, week out now, you know, we're, we're growing as a team and, you know, still areas that we can improve on, and which is a good thing, um, but we are growing. Tonight was a matter of getting three points, no matter how, how we did it. Philippe Clement knew a win would see Rangers draw level on points with title rival Celtic. Rabi Matondo got things going in the opening stages. But as the half drew to a close, Bojan Majofsky silenced the home crowd in Neil Warnock's first game as interim manager. Todd Cantwell ensured the points, though, in the second half. That's despite Rangers going down to ten men. Dujon Sterling seeing red for this challenge. That after Don Robertson upheld his original decision, despite being sent to the monitor. So another crucial win for Rangers and their manager says the sky's the limit. It's my ambition also to win everything. Until now, I never, I never did it with the team, to win everything in a season. So I have high ambitions always. When you get the ball, boy, he's wasting time at the end, last 10 minutes, and you know, you know you're doing well, don't you, really? Uh, they must get t coached very, very well. Are they coached with the first team? Elsewhere at Ibrox, midfielder Jose Cifuentes has left the club to join Brazilian side Cruzeiro on loan until the end of the season. Meanwhile, at Fur Park last night, Motherwell put in a five-star performance against Ross County to move up to eighth in the table. Andy Halliday, a double from Blair Spittle, Theo Baird and Jack Vale all on the score sheet as pressure mounts on county boss Derek Adams. Ronnie Charters, STV News. Tonight we'll have ramifications for the title race for Europe and the battle against relegation from Easter Road where Hibernian take on Celtic. That's all the sport from me. Jamie, thank you. Let's get the weather now with Sean. An icy start to the day will give way to a series of oohs and ahs. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Very good evening to you. Quite a change in the weather in the next couple of days. We go from the cold air, the bright weather, to wet and rather windy weather at times. Although it does look as if the wettest weather will be in eastern parts of the country because we'll be in more of an easterly flow by the time we get to the weekend. The rain always a wee bit more showery for us, but certainly turning quite a bit milder. But certainly not mild tonight. A cold, frosty one to come tonight. And temperatures probably the lowest since that last cold spell we had in January, down to about minus four or minus five degrees, parts of Lanarkshire and 
and also across Stirlingshire. And still some wintry showers affecting the Hebrides, so the risk of some icy patches here, but becoming more and more isolated later on the night. Now, tomorrow, quite a lot of shade there on the map, that shadow, which of course represents cloud. Now, to start the day, the cloud will be fairly high level stuff, so you'll still get the sunshine breaking through. So hazy sunshine during the morning, a cold, frosty start to the day, but thicker cloud coming in later on, and the risk of some wintry showers coming in to the lights of South Ayrshire, South Lanarkshire, and also the borders by the end of the afternoon. Temperatures 2 or 3 degrees Celsius. The biggest change, though, comes on Friday. We'll see a band of rain, sleet and snow moving its way northwards. Snow over higher ground could get quite a bit of snow over higher levels, especially in eastern parts for a time, but even here turning back to rain by the end of Friday and also into Saturday. By the weekend, our temperatures will back up to around 6 to 8 degrees Celsius. There will be outbreaks of rain, but as I say, the worst of it will be in the east. Bye-bye. TUI sponsors STV Weather. And finally, to what lengths would you go to see your favourite band? Well, around 100 fans of the 1975 are braving a freezing cold night uh, camping outside the Hydro ahead of the group's gig there tomorrow. Some fans have been there for 24 hours already, while one girl told STV News she has travelled from Australia to sleep outside the Glasgow venue, all to get a prime spot the next day. Brandon Cook went along to meet them. Sheer dedication or utter madness, whatever it is, there's no doubting the enthusiasm of these fans. All are camping here to be the first in line for a special place in the front row at tomorrow's 1975 gig. Hannah travelled from Australia to be here. I've never been to any of the UK before. <laughs> wow, it's quite a bold move to, yeah. to fly all the way over from halfway across the world to, to sleep in the streets of a city you've never been to before. You sound very crazy, but I probably am a little crazy. <laughs> The 1975, led by lead singer Matty Healy, are known for their dedicated fan base. I'm told makeshift villages like these have become commonplace ahead of gigs. I'm an older fan, <laughs> and that's half the draw, is just being part of a really amazing community of, you know, people of sort of all ages who are quite accepting and yeah. fun, and we're just all here for the music. It's amazing, like, I feel like the community is so nice, you know what I mean? Like, everyone comes together to start each other and feel very safe. Although you wouldn't imagine, like, sleeping on the streets that you feel safe, but it is a safe environment, it's so nice. Like, the boys have never that you're going to be so close to them, like, so good. I love camping. 45, 46, 47, 48. 48 tents, nearly 100 people all braving the cold here tonight, hopefully to get a spot at the front of that stage tomorrow night. Whether this will all be worth it, of course, depends on the 1975's performance tomorrow night. So, no pressure, boys. Brandon Cook, STB News, Glasgow. So do you think of 1975? Oh, happy days, playing with your pals, football, bikes, just very innocent times. John, I'm talking about the band. I knew that. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night.